Mark Stein is currently in the centre of a libel case launched by scientist Michael Mann. Stein criticised his findings on climate change, uh, condemned the famous, infamous hockey stick analogy, and has since called him a doctor of fraudology. Stein said he would represent himself in court, but has now hired a lawyer. He calls a, a real free speech warrior who has had great consequential impact on American cases and English libel law to represent him in the case. And the result, the verdict, will likely define the debate over climate uh, and climate change for the years to come. Mark joins us now from New York. Uh, Mark, for, for those who haven't been following this, I mean, this is an extremely important case with a lot of consequences. What's the state of play right now? Well, well, first of all, I don't blame anyone for not following it. I wish I had that luxury. <laughs> uh, we've just entered our third year uh, over a 280-word blog post. Uh, he sued me, Michael Mann, the guy who created the famous global warming hockey stick that features in Al Gore's Inconvenient Truth movie. Uh, every Canadian school kid under the age of uh, uh, 18, really, has been exposed to this at one point or another during their education and been taught that it's, uh, it's fact. I disagree. Where in the D.C. Superior Court, uh, he's suing me. And I, I think it's the most consequential free speech case in the United States uh, for half a century since the New York Times Sullivan case. Uh, if, it, if I were to lose, it would essentially put scientists in a protected category uh, that, you're, that, 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 you can't, that you can't really criticize as freely as you can other people in society. Uh, real scientists don't ask a court to adjudicate their science. Dr. Banting didn't, Madame Curie uh, didn't, uh, Einstein didn't, uh, Rutherford didn't. This is something new and uh, disturbing. Uh, the, the urge of the big climate enforcers to put so-called climate science beyond criticism. Now, I, I've never claimed that I understand the science behind this debate. I'm not going to pretend otherwise. There are some issues where I really have a certain degree of expertise, not in this era. For me, though, what I don't understand is this. Uh, if he doesn't agree with what you say about him, uh, write an article, ignore you, uh, just pretend you're not there. Why does he have to silence you? Well, I think he's, he's thin-skinned. He's a public figure, and the public figures you can say all kinds of things about in the United States. Jerry Fulwell sued Larry Flint um, uh, over some quite uh, sexually explicit allegations uh, that Larry Flint, the big-time pornographer of mm -hmm. Hustler magazine, made about the Reverend Jerry Falwell. And, and the Supreme Court basically said, look, you're a public figure. You have to suck it up. People say uh, bad things about public figures all the time. That's, that's part of American life. This is someone who will not uh, participate in debates with anyone who disagrees with him, uh, which makes him fundally, fundamentally unsuited, actually not just to public life or celebrity, um, but actually to, uh, to science as well. He will, not, he will not participate on stage in debates with people who disagree with him. He will not use the Twitter handles of people who disagree with him. I'm not even talking about me. I'm talking about uh, distinguished fellow scientists that he insults, like uh, Dr. Judith Curry, who happens to disagree with him. Uh, so so the, the issue here is, is that since the hockey stick came, uh, came along, there's been a party line on climate science. There's been an official ideology of climate science. Uh, and that official ideology happens to be, with every passing month, at odds with what's happened. Uh, if your kid started at college this fall, there's been no global warming since the day he or she was born. Uh, it stopped in, the, in, in 1996, 1997, and we are in, if anything, a slight cooling trend since then. So the, so the official scaremongering has turned out not to be so. And yet the more uh, the reality diverges from these turn-of-the-century climate models, the more the big climate enforcers, the climb syndicate, uh, takes the tire iron in the back alley to anybody who disagrees with them. Uh, and that's, that's why this thing, that's why this case, they poured millions and millions of dollars into this case because they're propping up the official version. It's like one of those Soviet five-year plans uh, that never came true. In this, in this case, it's a 20-year plan that hasn't come true, uh, but they're committed to the official version and they're spending a fortune to prop it up. Now, I'm not asking you to repeat a libel, but 
If you said about him what you just said to, to us on this television show, it seems that's just an opinion. It's a disagreement. I, mean, I, I don't quite understand how uh, that could be a case of litigation. Did, did you say more than that? Yeah, I basically said uh, that I regard the hockey stick as fraudulent. Uh, the idea, its central message is it purports to show the global temperature. Uh, and as I said, every Canadian school child has been exposed to this graph and taught it as fact. It purports to show the planet's temperature over the last millennium, since the year 1000 to the year 2000. The first 900 years as the flat blade of a hockey stick, mm. and then the last century, the 20th century, shooting up and through the ceiling yep. uh, as, the, as the blade of the hockey stick, with the previous 900 years as the flat handle. Uh, and and uh, to do that, uh, I, I, don't, I don't believe that's the history of the planet's climate this last thousand years, nor did climate science uh, until Michael Mann produced this. We used to be taught things like the medieval warm period when they, uh, when they were making wine in Greenland. Uh, and that's how Greenland got its name. Mm -hmm. And the, and the so-called Little Ice Age, uh, where all the, uh, the, the prints of London uh, with people skating on the Thames. Yep. Uh, in other words, there was a natural climate variability uh, across the planet, and which, which was widely accepted and widely accepted by climate science. Mm. And he says now that's not so. There was no medieval warm period. There was no little ice age. The planet was just one consistent temperature for 900 years until man came along, climbed in his SUV, uh, turned up his thermostat to 72 in his, uh, in his home, and there goes the planet's climate. I, I think that's absolute rubbish. There's less and less evidence for it, and it required quite a bit of artifice uh, to get the uh, data to come out and show that. Right. Again, I, I don't know the science. I, I just find the debate very interesting. Can he win this case? I mean, can, can he make it impossible for you and, of course, for your successors uh, to <laughs> criticize him? Well, I'm up against a District of Columbia jury, <laughs> which isn't the most favorable jurisdiction. And as many of my readers have pointed out, uh, I'm an unlikable foreigner. <laughs> so, and, and you know how that goes, Michael. Yes, <laughs> and, I do. Um, and, uh, and I, uh, so I have a burden uh, to, I have something of a burden to overcome in that respect. Uh, but I am, I am reasonably confident that the truth is on my side. This is, uh, I never thought I'd say this after my experience with the Canadian Human Rights Commissions, uh, but I would, I would rather be in, 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 a, in, in the so-called halls of so-called justice in Canada uh, almost anywhere else than in this sort of sclerotic, uh, choked septic tank in the District of Columbia, where they take years and years and years and years of your life over a 200-word uh, blog post. But I, I am confident that 12 good men and true, or good men and women and true, however, that, that's not quite as elegant a phrase, but I'm, I'm, I'm confident that uh, the, the truth will out on this matter, Michael. It, it, even if it does, it must have cost you a fortune, and that might be the point behind this. It's so expensive to defend uh, uh, an, an opinion, a point of view. Yeah, uh, uh, he's, he, he, I'm not the first one that he's done this to. He did it to a retired professor in Canada called Tim Ball, who he's tied up in the uh, British Columbia courts for half a decade, drained uh, that guy's savings. Uh, and, and people start these lawsuits uh, because uh, because they know that that's a good way to get you to go quiet. The lawyers always advise, you know, don't say a word. So you remove someone from the debate, you drain their savings, and uh, so what if the case never goes anywhere, you never get to court? I've answered his discovery requests. I may publish them as a book, by the way. I've responded to his discovery requests. He's not responding to mine. Uh, so just, just to s sort of lighten the load of my legal fees, I may actually publish... <laughs> Uh, Mark Stein's discovery requests as uh, as my book for next Christmas if uh, if we're still chugging along like this. And, um, but you've got to you you really got to you you've got to have stamina and you've got to have cash to yeah. survive the American legal system. Oh, good load, good load, good load. Hey, Mark, I appreciate it as always. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks a lot, Michael.